I was asleep and Colt decided he wanted to go play with the landlord's dog and steal the landlord's dog's bones. So I woke up. I put all my clothes on, ready to go out and do battle. He was right outside the gate with a piece of, I guess it's cow spine, about that long, about eight inches long. Weasel sat on the bed and said, what? Okay, so I wanted to talk about something because I'm asleep. And it's easier for me to be honest if I'm subconscious. A ton of doubt and self-hatred dumped itself on me today without my permission, knowledge, or consent. I don't even really want to voice it. I think you people can figure out all a bunch of the reasons why what I'm doing seems like it might be nearly impossible. Radically shifting in my entire life, all the way from the fundamentals of diet and exercise, all the way up to uh, how I network with people in order to try to gain employment. It's pretty scary and overwhelming, and I'm doing it all by myself, pretty much. I mean, I'm starting to develop a support system, but it's new, and it's fragile, and it can fall apart at any second. Plus, there are the predators, the people who are um, lurking around me because they think they can exploit me because I'm economically vulnerable, uh, particularly people who... I won't even talk about it. Okay, so in the meantime, this woman I love is watching me go through this process and is feeding back to me really encouraging things. And we'll believe it when she sees it. Sort of like the box being sent to England. She wouldn't let herself get too excited about it till it actually showed up. I think I just broke the window. <laughs> no, no. Um, well, the box arrived. I'm eating um, dish pans full of salad every day. Really good salads, by the way. I'll take you through some recipes sometime, but not now I'm asleep. So it's about this woman. Because I want to vlog my experience about this, including my self-doubts and the scary bits. But I don't want to expose her to the scary bits. Not because I don't want to be honest, but because ugh, she's a caretaker. She takes care of people. And if she hears that somebody's in distress, she kicks into automatic mode, and it's not her job to take care of me. I don't want her really particularly exposed to my vulnerabilities. Again, not because I don't want to be inauthentic. But it's not her burden. It's up to me to educate and strengthen and save myself. I said in another video on my own savior. I can network with other people. She gets the support and the feedback and that sort of thing. But it was a really scary day. It was a scary day. I told myself some really awful things about myself. And then I realized it's just like every other addiction in my life. Revelation. It's just like every other addiction in my life. I could go a few days without it, and then the cravings start. And the craving to, uh, to fail... The craving to give in to inertia and self-hatred, it started. And so I'm taking care of the footwork. I'm out there trying to clean up from the mud and the ice and out in the yard. Getting ready to do laundry. Trying to find work. I'm still going through the process. Making kick-ass salads. Really good food. And I'm trying not to dump my stuff on him. But I need to be honest on my channel. Because there are people coming here 
that are witnessing what I'm doing, and they seem to be getting a little bit of encouragement from it. Also, I would like to keep a record so that in a year or two, I can sort of chart my own progress and see that things have changed. I'm just still at the point where I tell myself scary stories. I'm about to embark on a radical lifestyle uh, shift. I'm getting involved in the kink community, the BDSM community. I'm not sure what that means yet. Uh, yes, I am. I know exactly what it means. I just don't know what the experience is going to be. But this is a very brave thing for somebody to do. Anybody. And having been really indoctrinated into being a good girl, and having really internalized toxic messages that say I don't get to be powerful or decisive or strong or self-oriented and self-centered. Uh, it, yeah, it takes some guts to do what I'm doing. Also, it takes guts because I'm going to have to deal with the body image stuff and the shame and embarrassment about the teeth, which are just a result of poverty. Oh. So I'm making some really, not so much radical changes, but honest changes. I'm confronting parts of myself that I pretty much always knew they were there and thought, well, if I just kind of keep a lid on them. I'm not sure what's going to mean. I, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Oh. How can I be? There's no curriculum. This is not a goal-oriented process. The process is the goal. Old radical lesbian feminist stuff from the 70s. The process is the goal. The unpeeling. The opening. The confrontation with my deepest self. That's the goal. I know I won't be a worthy partner to Em or anybody else if I don't do this. So, you're going to open the box today. Mm -hmm. Em got another delivery and was so happy about it and I went, oh shoot. Thanks for stealing my thunder. <laughs> She's been bouncing around like a puppy about this new delivery. And, and my little... There's a story called about the littlest angel where this little kid dies and goes to heaven. And Jesus is going to be born. And the angels are asking for gifts for Jesus. And all this kid's got is a little cigar box and like his dog's collar in it and a pretty rock. And... You know, things kids collect. And that's his best stuff. And he goes up and he puts it down at the throne of God. Because, uh, I mean, he's been standing in line with the other angels waiting. And all the other angels are giving out, like, gold. And, you know, really fancy crap. And all he's got is a stupid little box. With, like, a marble in it and stuff. And I kind of feel like that right now. Uh... Now, of course, Em is not God, and I'm not an angel. And in the story, because it's supposed to be a Christian consequence story for children, in the story, God sees this little box of humble offerings, and he makes it the star over Bethlehem. I don't think my box is the star over Bethlehem. I think the other delivery was the star with Bethlehem. The other delivery, she called it sexy twice. Oh. <laughs> Isn't the human ego a sad and pathetic thing? Oh. <laughs> Insecurities, I'll deal with them. It's not her problem. It's just funny to go through this procedure, this process, this unwrapping of myself. 
with cords in my way. That's fatty. I'm turning this shit off now. It'll be alright. But it was funny. Oh, she was beaming from ear to ear. <laughs> you know, she was beaming from ear to ear when she Skyped me to let me know the box arrived, too. She was. It was more because I was bouncing around like a puppy. But, um, she was beaming. Ah, uh, the ego compares itself to anything else that might have an impact on what it wants. It gets territorial and, and vicious and insecure. It's ego. So I'm beginning my training. You're not going to believe this. It's true. Yeah, some of you are going to believe this. I'm beginning my training in mastery. <sighs> Which means I'm beginning my training in self. Right now, I think I better begin my training and uploading this and going back to sleep. This fatty doesn't like being disturbed in the middle of the night. The box, they're opening the box to 